Good evening. My name is Kofi Kranting. For many years, I've raised the question to Ghanaians, especially the youth of our nation. Are we ready yet? Ready to rise and take back your nation from the claws of corruption? Along with the coalition of independent candidates, we shouted out during the 2020 elections for the youth to join us and stop accepting the same old, same old. I presented a science-based, data-driven, human-centered plan for our nation, based on the entrepreneurial spirit of our youth. Now I shout it out again, Ghana belongs to the ideas, the, ide the spirit and the independence of its youth. It is time, actually it is way past time for the youth of Ghana to claim their mantle of leadership with a plan aimed at growing the nation for them not stripping away the wealth of their future. The corrupt powers who run our nation as if it's their personal bank account pulled out all the stops to remove us from the ballot. We could not get the people to rise in mass indignation at that time because like every election cycle, money, gifts, and promises are plentiful near the vote. We shouted out, don't fall for the bribes and corruption of election year gifts, but were unsuccessful. Less than three months into the second term of Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufu Ado, the people knew that we as a nation, we have been fooled again, and our message was truth. This president and the MPs elected with him in 2020 are following the same pattern as always, borrow and spend from the World Bank, the international community, and corporations. It has been claimed that the World Bank told the president that Ghana has reached its limit and it's time to fix the country. That is not exactly true, but it is exactly what needs to be done. What the World Bank and other debtors want is more collateral. Ask yourself what the president and his corrupt ministers, MPs and industrial corporate leeches are pledging as collateral when they beg for money around the world. They are pledging the future blood, sweat and tears of the youth of the Ghanaian people. They are pledging the opportunities that schools, social services, healthcare, job training, clean water and technologies should offer our youth. If we continue this road built on debt, which leads to the presidential palace and the homes of the ministers, MPs and industrialists, friends of this administration of thieves, the youth of Ghana shall perish in poverty. It is past time to fix the country. It is time for the youth to rise up in mourning and lay their heads down at night with one thought and one conviction that this is my country, I am Ghana, I want my future back. This president and the MPs that support him are only interested in the power that allows them to gain financial, not in serving the people and certainly not the youth. They have sold the youth and their future to international money lenders and corporations who ravage our resources, pollute our waters and destroy our lands. Does the president of Ghana need to fly in a leased luxury plane which cost the country 2.8 million cities when he went to France to beg President Emmanuel Macron for debt cancellation? As we speak now, he is racking up some more debt for the youth to pay and then lying to Angela Merkel about the state of Ghana's economy. I ask the youth of this nation to take five minutes and think about this. How many children could Ghana have fed for the 2.8 million cities it costs for this jet rental? How many children could Ghana have fed for the $28 million note for cars for the parliamentarians? How many jobs provided? How many roads repaired? How many schools modernized? How many teachers hired or just paid salaries. The election is over. We have again been fooled. Every election, the people say we won't be fooled again, yet we are. 
Ghanaians have elected a government of corruption with no intention of serving the people, but rather providing silver platters for themselves, family, and friends. We must fix the country by changing the government and embracing the ideas, leadership, and future that will nurture the youth for the future survival of Ghana. All of us together must call for this president and his appointees to step down and remove their hands from Ghana's treasury, not forgetting their despicable act of neglect with the Saglame housing project. All youth of this country must join and demand a Ghana for the future. It is the only way to fix the country. Yes, Charlie, we tire. However, we must find the strength to find the power to fix the country. We must fix the constitution. We must fix the government. We must fix the ministries. We must fix the parliament. We must fix the economy. We must fix the schools, fix the roads, and elect a government of leaders whose decisions are predicated on a science-based, data-driven, human-centeredness that will work for Ghana today and tomorrow. It may be our last chance to fix the country before we become a failed state controlled by a new colonialism disguised as debt. We must end the Ponzi scheme of the Dukadaya brothers, Mahama and Akufuado. I support Fix the Country and call upon the youth of Ghana to lead us out of the depths of this despair. Stand up for your rights. Say it loud. Say it proud. Charlie, we tire. We tire of the corruption. Boys are bread. Boys are bread rough. We are strong and energized to fix our country. Let's do this.